Chamber membership luncheon. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask Patty Souther to come forward and give our invocation, followed by a pledge. Patty is our Vice Chair of Community Development Division for the Chamber Board. Would you all please stand? Please bow your hats. We come before you today to give you honor and praise. You are the source of all that is good. You are the source of all of our blessings. Thank you for every gift that we've been given. We thank you for the opportunity to come and gather together this day. We ask for your hand of blessing on this meeting. We ask that you would guide and direct our meeting so that it is full of wisdom, productivity, and respect for one another. Bless this food and thank you for helping us to accomplish our work and our goals this day. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> We're excited to have four companies uh, sharing the sponsorship for today's lunch. It's not on. It's not loud. Can y'all hear a little better now? Yes. Okay. We're excited to have four companies sharing the sponsorship for today's lunch. Jenny's Custom Embroidery, Georgia Connector Magazine, Peach State Publications, and State Farm Insurance, Patty Souther Agency. We will hear brief remarks from each of them now. Thank you. It's kind of a tradition now, I think, for us to sponsor together, and I enjoy it every year. Um, it's always an honor to, to be here with my fellow uh, colleagues and, and friends. Um, I wanted to take this opportunity. First off, I'm Jenny Givens with Jenny's Custom Embroidery. We specialize in embroidery, screen printing, and promotional products and help build your brand. Um, I wanted to take this moment to kind of mention something we've done this year that's a little bit of a new venture. Some of you, I, I think most of you do know about it, but we have opened up a, two booths at Vintage Revival Antiques, and that's where we've, you still can't hear? Let's see. Okay, we're gonna get really close to the mic. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, maybe you didn't get any of that, but I'm gonna keep going. Um, we have rented two booths at Vintage Revival Antiques, and we have shifted all of our monogramming and gift items in that location, and we're kind of excited about that. Um, I wanted to mention that to you if you did not know about it, and then also we are having kind of a summer clearance going on right now so we can make room for our fall and winter uh, holiday items coming in. So please take a, a moment out of your day and check that out. Also, I wanted to mention the yummy treats on your table. Uh, we had Oreos last year, brownies this year, and this is just one of the products we can help provide to help you market your company, and I hope you enjoy that yummy treat. If you need more information on it, there's also some pamphlets on your table. And then lastly, I know we're pushed for time, but I wanted to um, take a moment to thank each and every one of you. We are actually about to celebrate 10 years in business in October. And it would not be possible without the Chamber of Commerce. I remember 10 years ago, my father and his wise uh, advice said, you need to join the Chamber and get involved. And that's what I did. And I know without a doubt that without that decision, we wouldn't be celebrating 10 years. So I just wanted to thank you for supporting our company and then your commitment to buy local. And I'll turn it over to Patty. Kidding. Just kidding. Hi, I'm Patty. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm Kenny Smiley with Georgia Connector Magazine and also co-owner of Peach State Publications with Eli, but you'll hear from him in just a few minutes. And um, echoing what Jenny said, it is definitely an honor to be up here with these fine folks, my friends, my colleagues, my people I do business with and all of that. So, and also just a great thank you to the Chamber of Commerce. I come from a Chamber of Commerce background and let me tell you, we got one of the best in the state and it's because of all of you and the staff. So um, uh, anyway, I'm Kenny Smiley, Georgia Connector Magazine. We are a regional uh, quarterly publication, um, both printed and online. And um, this month marks seven years that um, started the, the magazine. And um, so, and once again, I owe it 
so much to all of you and to the Chamber of Commerce. Um, you know, coming in, jumping in with both feet first, and this is where the hub of business and activity happens, and um, so I can't say enough about it. We've come a long way in seven years. Our circulation has more than doubled. Um, we're distributing more than 50,000 copies across <coughs> Walton County and the surrounding um, counties, and um, but with the heart of it right here in Walton County. Um, we've got an online version that's very interactive. Um, you can visit our new website at georgiaconnector.com. You can find uh, the current issue, all of our archived issues, all the way back to that very first one with Bessie Cooper on the cover. So um, go, go visit us there, social media platforms, and um, it's a great place to market your business, your events, your community, and um, once again, I thank all of you very much for making it happen. Thank you. So usually I make Kenny uh, talk about Peach State, but today I'm stuck doing it, so bear with me. Um, I'm Eli Luciano, I'm the co-owner of Peach State Publications, and of course you know my uh, business partner, Kenny. Um, we're a custom publisher doing uh, community guides, magazines, and maps for chambers of commerce throughout the Southeast. Um, but Walton, of course, is our home chamber, being that's where we live, we work, it's where our office is and where our kids go to school, and uh, we absolutely love it. Um, earlier this year, as many of you know, um, we published a new Walton County map, which was a much needed update. It included a ton of new roads, bypasses, and updates, and we're so thankful for all of our advertisers that supported the project and supported the chamber. Um, and then a couple years ago, we published the last issue of the Quality of Life magazine, which I know you're all familiar with. Um, this has been such a well-received piece throughout the state and in the community for bringing new people to the area, new businesses. Um, and letting the locals even know what Walton County has to offer. I've heard from numerous people that have read the magazine. They did not know about all the wonderful amenities that Walton did have to offer. Um, we'll be launching the next edition of the magazine towards the end of next month. Uh, we'd love to talk to you a little bit further. It does last for about two years, so it's a great advertisement opportunity for you. And then, like the others have said, this is our third year in a row um, sponsoring with these friends, businesses, and people in the community, and we just uh, thank you all for that. Thank you. I am the real <laughs> Patty Southern. Yes, you are. <laughs> Thanks to the Country Club for providing such a wonderful buffet. They do this all the time and you know they try to get fresh food and it's just so wonderful that we have such a variety. Um, I'm excited to be one of the luncheon sponsors today. These guys, Jenny, Eli, Brock, and um, Kenny. <laughs> they are dear friends and thank you so much uh, Terry for allowing us to do this every year. Um, I serve on the Chamber Board of Directors and on the Executive Board and I am just saying the same thing as um, Jenny. Get involved in the Chamber. If you're a new business or you're new to the Chamber, get involved. That's, that's the only way you can make this work for you. June 1, my State Farm Agency celebrated 24 years in Monroe. State Farm celebrated 95 years. Thank you all that are insured with my agency. Everything we do is to, to build personal relationships with all of you. Um, we'd love to be your agent, and on the table there's a quote form. Please get it back to us if you'd like us to quote your insurance. But the best thing about my agency is my fabulous team. Would you guys please stand? Susan Blair is our office manager. And she keeps us together every day. She's our customer service, claims, and marketing specialist and has been with the agency since 2008. Susan's a 2013 Leadership Walton grad, a chamber ambassador chair previously, and serves on numerous chamber committees. Susan is a nurturer by nature and loves taking care of our customers. Jane Scott is our 2014 Leadership Walton grad and is currently the Vice President of Leadership Walton and next year will be the President. Jane is an insurance account rep and has been a State Farm team member since 1993, as long as I have been. And she's been with my agency since 2013. Jane's primary goal is to help you take care of what's important to you, your family and your dreams. Kimberly Cosby is a Leadership Walton grad of 2015 she has also been a former chamber ambassador.
Kim is an insurance account rep and has been with State Farm as a team member since 2004 and with my agency since 2013. Kim's a busy mom. Her son Connor um, just keeps her on the go all the time. And she loves Walton County and helping our customers to protect their family is her passion and it truly is. Ashley Housley is an insurance account rep with our team and she's been with me since 20, uh, January 2016. Ashley has two gorgeous kids, Mary Hayden and Landon, and they keep her life full of excitement. We're thrilled that Ashley will be attending our State Farm Team Development Program at our corporate office this fall, and she is wonderful at catering to the needs of our customers and their families. Um, Joy Chick is also with the agency. She couldn't be here today, but she's great. She's our part-time marketing and, and service assistant. She's only been with us since 2017, but she is now Susan's right hand, believe you me. Um, Joy was born and raised right here in Monroe and is a graduate of Monroe Area Comprehensive High School and of George College. I hope that you all will enjoy our lunch and learn. That's Eli's words. And we look forward to our customer service presentation. Thank you, Patty. And real quick, I got to embarrass her because Eli didn't do it. Sarah Scobell, she works with us at Peach State Publications and she is a great help there, so we appreciate it very much. It is my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker today. And uh, his name is Dr. Mark Newton. He's an expert on improving profitability through customer service. Um, he recently retired as the Director of Hotel, Restaurant, and Tourism Management Program at Gwinnett Technical College. Um, he taught in, in Introduction to Hospitality, Employee Leadership Training, Hotel Operations, Food and Beverage Management, Hospitality Marketing. Um, he is now teaching at Georgia State and Piedmont College, and uh, he is also a consultant as well. He's a graduate of the School of Hotel Administration at Cornell University, and he's got his master's and doctorate from the University of, UG, uh, University of Georgia. Go dogs! Yes. <laughs> And uh, he also taught at Gwinnett Tech for over 29 years. And I have to say this part, you told me to, you know, but I got to say this. Um, he uh, earned 13 Teacher of the Year awards, including the State of Georgia, the Rick Perkins Award. So that's awesome. Um, he, you can find him speaking at many events, consulting with um, many um, municipalities and places like that. He's been married for 36 years to Susan. He's got 35 year old twins. Ben and Allie found out his title of Walton County to their 35, 35 years ago they graduated from George Walton Academy right here. Um, he has five grandkids including 20 month old triplets. Wow. Um, and Terry, Terry heard Dr. Newton speak at the Gwinnett CVB and just was really um, it, really um, thrilled by his um, presentation so she brought him here. So my pleasure to introduce Dr. Mark Newton. Perfect. Hi everybody. I'm gonna to try to get this microphone. Hope you're all doing well. Um, you have handouts. Can you, uh, right in the middle of that says Mark Newton, that's me. And just, I'm a teacher so I have to have handouts. Come on, you gotta have handouts. <laughs> Yep, perfect. Okay, we all have handouts, all have handouts. Absolute pleasure to be here. It does bring back some memories. I had a chance to drive around. My kids graduated in, in 2000, and uh, boy, has life changed a lot in Walton County. And uh, uh, you guys have been uh, very active, to say the least. So uh, delightful to be here. Uh, I did want to start a story. Uh, you probably... Uh, heard that uh, I have uh, triplets, and uh, there they are, uh, and uh, they're 20 months old, uh, and uh, yeah, the tickle monster visited them, them that night, and, uh, but it was about three weeks ago, uh, we uh, decided to uh, take two of them, the other one was with the other grandmother, and uh, we decided to go up to, um, it was uh, a shoe store up in North Georgia, and we, uh, walking around there and we were right on top of them. I'm right, to, you know, we're used to taking two. Okay, when you have three, you're outnumbered and outflanked. Okay, <laughs> but I had two. 
Okay, so my wife had one and I had the other. Okay, it was uh, Bennett and then Reagan. Okay, so we were looking for shoes for them. And we were looking and looking and looking and uh, they were active, but we were very well behaved though and we were right. And there were two people that worked in the shoe store. And we were, you know, obviously interested in buying shoes. They, for 15 to 20 minutes, the two, I don't want to call them sales representatives, but employees there did this for 15 minutes. Didn't once ask for, well, what can I do to help you out? You know, uh, can I help you with these shoes? These shoes would be good for you. And just have fun, okay? But instead, what happened is it was more of a sales avoidance. And that's not a lot of fun. And so I can imagine what was happening in the next day when they were coming and reporting the sales because the mall was packed. I mean, after school and, yeah, I mean, they had these school sales and all these things going on. And um, this, the boss coming up to him and say, boy, we had a slow day yesterday. And they're saying, yeah, I mean, just the people didn't want to buy. And just, they never ask for the sale. And so take a look at, think now. How many times have you gone around in retail, we've had experiences in shopping malls, and boy, have we heard a lot about shopping malls, right? And the sales have gone down quite a bit. Well, are we hiring sales people? People that are not afraid to ask for the sale. That's all about customer service. That's, that's a huge thing. And so we wanna make sure that we know that it starts up here. It starts with the boss. It starts with the owner. It starts with the whatever. And I need to make sure that as a boss, as an owner, I have to be customer driven. Because it cannot, if I don't associate with customers, I can't expect my employees to associate with customers. So it starts with me. And so what we're going to try to do today is we're going to go through customer service. I'm going to, may I ask some questions? It's all right to answer. You can never give me the wrong answer. In over 30 years of teaching, I have heard some Lulus, okay? But the thing is, you've participated and you've answered something, and that's what we want to do, is we want to make sure you participate. So you do have pens, so make sure that you write some things. And the, the first answer right there, if you take a look at number one, stopping the sales avoidance culture. Okay, what are, we tr what are we trying to do right here is that we want to make sure that I clearly define what you can expect from this session. And what you can expect is at least one or two points that you can take home with you and hopefully, hopefully apply. Because the last thing you, I want to happen is that three or four weeks from now, you go, well, what did you remember about that customer service seminar? And you go, well, I remember there's one tall, goofy guy, he's a bald head, and you just, you know, I remember a little, but I don't remember it. Then you wasted your time. I want, just a minute, one thing. Okay, am I right now? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the, um, uh, so I want to make sure that that's the point, is that you get one or two things that, and, and I'll be hanging around here if you want to, uh, uh, you know, ask any questions or whatever. I'm more than happy to talk to you. I, I deal a lot with students. I teach now probably over... Uh, it will be about 150 students this semester. I teach uh, four classes, uh, two at Georgia State and two at Piedmont College. Uh, so, uh, and you know, trying to get them employable is always a challenge um, because that's one for thing I do with customer service. I deal a lot with workforce development. How do we hire people, train people, evaluate people, and retain people? And that's, that's a huge thing. And it all relates, so much of it relates to customer service. I teach a marketing classes, and I teach how to market a restaurant, a hotel, a hardware store, any kind of business, but also to make sure that how to market yourself. As a college student, how do you market yourself? And so one of the things that I talk about in customer service and marketing and so forth, the best marketing tool that you have is customer service. Customer service is the big differentiator. It differentiates your company with another company. It's the people. It's the people. But here's a, a couple things that uh, I find kind of interesting. Is if you take a look at the people, right? I mean, look around this room. We're different. 
different ages, different ethnicity, different, all kinds, diff, just different. Great, God bless you, that's great. But realize that people are not all like me. People are different, different upbringings. We cannot assume that everybody knows what cust good customer service looks like. We have to define expectation. We have to make sure that people know what good customer service is, looks like, how do we train for it, and whatever. So, I have a question for you. How many of you <clears throat> ever played baseball? God bless you. How many people ever played baseball? Softball, whatever, okay, great. Well, this right here is, so let's raise your hand. How many people ever played softball? Okay, great. How many people ever played, um, let's say, uh, high school baseball? Okay, great. Uh, and, you know, and we've seen college baseball. We may have some college players here, even pro players, okay? But if you take a look at baseball in all different levels, you have a home plate, okay? You have a home plate. It doesn't matter if you play softball, college baseball, high school baseball. The home plate is basically 17 inches, okay? It's 17 inches from one side to the other. And you're expected to make sure, well, the only way that you're gonna score a run, doesn't matter if you're in softball, you know, any kind of league in baseball, is that you need to make sure that you touch home plate. The rules have not changed over the years. I mean, it's been a long, long time since the size of the home plate changed from what it is now. And so it is expected by the coach is to make sure that you touch home plate. Also, if you're up at the, at, at the batter's box, you're usually expected that it's gonna be called a strike if it's between one side of the home plate and the other. And hopefully it's between the knees or they change a little bit, but the letters, okay? <laughs> And so that's what it is, clearly that's an expectation. That is an expectation. And the thing is, is the same thing should be tr true with customer service. We set expectations. You can tell, this is what we expect from you. When you have high expectations, you have high results. And you need to clearly train people in what are your expectations? How do you deal with people? dealing with different ages, oh my gosh. We did this for over 25 years at Gwinnett Tech, and what we did is we did a thing called, um, it was an interview contest, where we had three interviewers would interview one student. And then we had, oh, probably 15, 16 different tables. And one of the biggest things that I just, I assumed that when you know I had them introduce themselves, but there's a particular generation that only will introduce themselves by their first name. And I go, I didn't, I didn't know that. I mean, but, and so I had to, I assumed. Okay, we all know the defi definition of assume, right? I'm not gonna get into that. Okay, again, I'm a Sunday school teacher, I'm not getting into that, okay. And so what we wanna do is that we can't assume that people know things like manners. Big thing on customer service. How do we deal with people? How do we deal when somebody has a problem? And one of the things about problems is that we need to make sure that people understand that when the people have a problem, they want it to be solved. And you have to take an interest in people. And so that's what we're gonna talk about a little bit today in, in dealing with the different customer service opportunities that we have. Because it, life has changed. And you'll, we'll talk about that also, okay? Um, what happens a lot of times when you don't have good customer service, it's like being stuck in the mud. You know, and, and the thing, because if you don't enjoy giving good customer service, you shouldn't be in the industry. My background is the hospitality industry. Anybody know what the definition of hospitality is? Taking care of somebody else. Ooh, yes, good job. Taking care of somebody else, okay, good. How do you make the other person feel? So in other words, if I'm giving hospitality, people realize that, hey, this particular person, we wanna make sure they have a good experience so that they wanna come back again. It's all about repeat business. It's a, you take a look at all the companies that are represented here, and you take a look, your lifeblood is repeat business. But all of a repeat business depends on how were you treated? 
It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. And you need to make sure that person is not stuck in the mud. That person's not. Because the neat thing about having a customer service culture is you're constantly learning new things. Learning new things. I'm, I'm working for a company now on a part-time basis as a, as a consultant. And what we do is we do hotel feasibility studies and so forth. And I'm working with three 23-year-olds. Well, I'm 66. There's a little gap right there. A little gap. And, but I'm loving every minute of it. Because they are so far ahead of technology on me. I mean, and I feel I'm fairly decent. But they're just like this second nature. And one of the things I always have to remember dealing with customers and stuff, they may not necessarily be as comfortable talking to people as I am. Because that's how I grew up. Okay, and so, but what I do is I cherish the differences. And we work together, we have a, you know, Aretha Franklin made this word famous back in the late 60s. Song? R-E-S-P-E-C-T, -E right, respect. And that's what we try to do is it respect the differences in people because that teamwork is felt by the customer. Okay, um, power of the consumer. Um, it is interesting. How many of you, if you have a bad experience out there, might post it on the internet somehow, through social media or whatever? Okay, got a few back there. Okay, how many of you have good experience might post something on the internet? Ooh, okay, that, that, that's really good. If you take a look at your handout right here, and, you, and, and I'm skip, gonna skip around a little bit. Um, it says right here, it's the, number 13, the viral impact of bad customer service. Over 60% of customers who hear about bad experience on a social media stop doing business with the offending business. So one of the things that we recommend, because people will believe social media much more than they'll believe an ad. And so what you have to do in developing a customer service uh, uh, culture is to make sure what is my internet presence like and make sure that that should be a very important part of your training process in customer service what are people saying about us it's because that's what yeah and so if I go to an employee and, and I want to make sure that that employee knows exactly what what's our strength what are some of our challenges and we find that out from what are customers saying about us okay so, uh, seek out and select and retain natural salespeople. I use the analogy that when all of a sudden you, um, you want to cook, I love to cook, I taught cooking for many, many years, and one of the things, that you gotta start with good ingredients. You can't des decide to make something really good if you have bad ingredients, stale or whatever, okay? And the same thing is true with a company. Make your life easier by finding people who are successful have a personality okay and to make sure I had a, a student once that came up to me and says I, I really don't want to get in the hospitality business and I said why don't you want to get in the hospitality business he said it's just too much blood they thought it was hospitals <laughs> okay and so we had a little talk so what we had to do, and, and, and I think one of the key things is when you're hiring people, and I've dealt with this for many years, is that you want to make sure that you hire trainable people. By the way, that's probably one of the most important things that I can ever tell my students, is you want to make sure, one of the big reasons why you are in school, why you're in college, why mommy and daddy are spending all this money on you, is that one of the things, and I talk about many, but one of the things is that you wanna make sure that when you leave this college, you gotta be trainable. You gotta make sure that you know how to learn. And, and because that's one of the things in dealing with customer service, is that how are you more employable on August 9th, 2017 than you were on August 9th, 2016? It relates to everybody in this room. It is your responsibility to be better at customer service. It is your responsibility to make sure that you are totally committed. Wow, this is great. Also, many great employees here. I'm certainly honored. Um, but uh, to make sure that you take the responsibility to be more of an asset for your company. And, uh, and so that's one of the, that's a real challenge. 
as far as, as, far as teaching. And that's one thing that I tell my students is to make sure that you go out of your way to two things. One is find out what you want to do. Your responsibility is to find your passion and your talent. What are you good at? You cannot do that by staying in your seat. You have to get out there to get involved with associations like the Chamber of Commerce. Be getting involved where you have an opportunity to actually meet people. Okay, I do a lot in, in, in workforce about how to, the responsibility, how do students take the responsibility to become more employable so that people like you will want to hire them. And life has changed over the years. And, and not bad, not bad, it's just more challenges. And so, okay, um, relationships. As I tell my students, with, to make sure that you as customer service representatives, you develop relationships with your customers. It's not a personal relationship, it's a business relationship. It's the trust, and we'll go back to the handout because there's a couple of those in the handout here. But you wanna make sure that even if you've had a bad experience, your job is to make sure that they leave happy. And when you have an opportunity to, to turn, as my, tell my grandkids, turn that smile, you know, turn that frown upside down, right? <laughs> and you wanna make sure that they are absolutely happy and it's, and, and, but you care. Unlike those people in the shoe company. We left 20 minutes, we didn't spend a dime. We wanted to pay, we wanted to buy something. If somebody had actually taken interest in us. And instead, they were stuck in the mud. Okay, relationships. Um, it is probably one of the biggest things that have changed over the years. People always ask me, in the past 30 years, how has things changed? Well, obviously technology has been great, but dealing with relationships and dealing with getting comfortable with the people that sit next, uh, they're sitting next door to them or next to the seat next to them, getting to know other people. But unfortunately, that impacts customer service. We can't assume that people know customer service because they may not have grown up that way, okay? Um, so, teamwork. Working together, helping people out. That's why I've said before why I love doing this consulting work, working with 23-year-olds. I left on Monday, I was there on Monday, and I left, and there were five things that I learned. Five things from the 23-year-olds. I was with the, the partner in charge who's exactly 10 years younger than me, he never, he always hears about this. And, and, and the 20-year-old intern came in, and the principal said, can you do this? And he said, oh yeah, I'll do this. He was an intern. He left, the principal looked at me, and I, and I just said, Wow, that's pretty amazing. He said, life is unbelievable with some of these kids. The technology is unbelievable. But being able to work on relation, re respecting the differences and understanding that people are different. That's all right, that's fine. Okay, um, social media, take advantage of the millennials. I was um, doing a seminar uh, probably about three or four months ago and we were talking about social media. And, we're, and, and it was kind of neat is that uh, we had a, a particular term in social media that I don't want to get into now, it's on dealing with Snapchat. And we were talking about it and, and I said, does anybody know how to deal with this? It, it was called geo filters, okay? Geo filters in Snapchat. And I go, I don't really know that much about it. And a 19 year old got up and started talking about geo filters. I shut my mouth because there was a person right in front of her who didn't know he was maybe in his late 50s and said, tell me a little bit more. And I just shut my mouth. And I let the 19 year old teach the 57 year old. It was a beautiful, I started crying. It was just beautiful. <laughs> it was just very emotional, very emotional. But take a look at because some of these social media is a great way to you know, learn from them because they will help you in understanding what people are saying about how are we connecting with our customers, okay? Um, repeat business, act like you're interested. 
making sure than you should be. Again, that's turning that frown upside down. We need to make sure that how are we on the phone? How are we on and sitting down and making customer service a priority? A lot of people talk about this. We've got a, a, another handout. We'll go back over the handout, but talk about it. They'll talk about customer service and they think that they're giving great customer service. Well, now all of a sudden, talk to your customer. What are they thinking about you? And so make sure that you have a, a really good way to talk to what can I do to improve business, okay? So um, act like you're interested. dealing with diversity. Oh my gosh, you know, in, in the hotel industry, in the restaurant industry, uh, life has changed so much. And, and in my classroom, life has changed so much. In Gwinnett County, last time I checked, there were 103 different languages in, represented in Gwinnett County. And when you're taking a look at all these different languages and all these different ways that people grew up and all the different ways, you know, the neat thing is that hire diverse employees because they understand the diverse customer. And I find it just fascinating when you can kind of sit down and talk to some of these people and, and that go, well, why is this person like this? And they'll sit down and talk to you. Remember that word respect, okay? Dealing with angry customers, how has that changed? <coughs> Pardon? Oh, they'll put it on social media. Look what's recently happened with the airline industry. Okay, some angry people, okay. Do people get a little bit more angry than they did 20 years ago? Could be, I have a great, a great uh, uh, slide. What, what airline travel looked like in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and how it looks like in 2017. Life has changed quite a bit. Life has changed, okay. But you've got, you get paid to deal with the changes. And that's what happens. Uh, I, I do want to make sure that you understand is that, and it's one thing I hope that you get from it, is customer service depends on communication. It depends on, we need to make sure, and there's a good hand, uh, uh, it's a test question here that will go later on. You've got to act like you own it. In other words, if you feel like you're part of the organization, if you feel like you're a part of it, you're wanting that person to have a great experience. But if you feel like an outsider, if you feel like you're not part of the organization, then you're not, it's gonna be difficult for you to have that same passion, that same heart, to give good customer service. By the way, one of the biggest reasons why people quit an organization is they quit an organization because they don't feel like they belong. They don't feel a part of it. That's why I, I talk about orientation, I talk about training, because our job is to make sure that they feel a part of the, but as we'll talk about later on, celebrate great performance through incentives, through contests, through all kinds of different things, the, the, the ways that you can do that, okay? How can I, how can I help you? Um, going up to a restaurant, and you go to the host to stand. It doesn't happen here. Of course, this is a country club. Um, but how many times you said, table for two, instead of, hi, how are you? How can I help you? It's those little things like that that we cannot assume an employee knows, okay? Um, conduct customer interaction training sessions. Making sure that you're constantly talking about customer service. I go back to when my dad was a salesperson for this uh, uh, electrical distributing company, and what they do is that every Monday, they would talk about, in their sales training, customer service skills. It is a skill and an art. We cannot assume that people have customer service experience and skills. We can't assume that. And so we need to make sure that we work on that. How do we get to this point? How do we get people to actually, we gotta hire trainable people. We need to make sure that it, as a customer service representative and as a boss, we need to model customer service because they will see, it's like being a parent. If you're a parent and you smoke like a chimney, how can we little expect little Jimmy not to smoke like a chimney? They're their kid. You know, you model behavior. 
And what, what you've got to be able to do is that you, you are constantly up there in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, up there on top, everybody watching you. And because you're modeling success in customer service. Okay, <laughs> celebrate your heroes. So go out of your way to make sure that you talk about, the, one of the best ways to talk about customer service is to make sure that you celebrate people and what they do. Uh, and, and, and I think that's really, really important. Uh, we need to make sure that we, we go out of our way to recognize the people that do such, and that's why, I mean, it was kind of neat, uh, that, because uh, don't take great service for granted. By the way, another reason why people quit is because they take great performance for granted. Never take great, a lack of recognition is 80% of people quit, I saw this once in a handout, 80% of employees quit because of lack of recognition. Customer service is hard work. It is hard work, it, it, but not if you enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy customer service, hmm, that's not a real good sign. Making sure that when you're, when you're hiring people and, 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 and selecting people, make sure that they know what customer service is all about at the cash register. And this is how we're gonna go through this uh, little handout. We're gonna, before we get to that last story, let's go through some of the things, just wanna make sure real quickly, get the old pen in your hand. Okay, um, customer service, number two, is the best marketing tool that we have. Remember number three, teach the team to run like they own it. S success attracts talent, but leaders know that they don't bu build business, you build people. It's a fun part of the job. And when people say, in the 20 years, how has life changed? And one of the things that I've noticed is that we don't have fun as much as we used to. Rewarding great performance. Rewarding, and, 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 and it's always the best bosses. By the way, I always tell my students, you know, in an interview, they're interviewing you, but you're also interviewing them. And to make sure that this is a, because there's a lot of response, but you want to make sure these people are actually looking at you as as a, a, an asset, as somebody that we're going to de help develop, not as somebody that's, oh, this person's going to make $10 an hour or whatever. Okay. Define what great service looks like. We talked about that. Repeat business is a livelihood of any successful company. Focus as much time and effort on keeping and growing customers as you do on getting them. Bad service happens all by itself. Good service, in number seven, has to be managed. You want to be customer service experts. Number nine, 85% of consumers indicated that they're willing to pay more than the standard price to ensure superior customer service. 10, I love this right here. It takes a lot of delighting experiences to foster loyalty, far more than it once did. But it only takes one less than satisfying experience to destroy that loyalty. Loyalty comes slowly on foot, but it flees on a fast horse. What does that mean? One bad spirit. It might be really minor. That person will leave in a heartbeat because look at all the options that they have. 87% of employees and executives believe we listen, but out of thousands of customers, only 39% said companies actually listened. 200 companies were asked if they gave superior customer service. 80% said they did, but only 8% of customers said they agreed. 80, oh, that's unbelievable. 8% of customers said they agreed. The viral impact of bad customer service is said over 60% of customers uh, hear about bad experience on social media, stop doing business with the offending business. 14, the asset test of service equality is service quality is how you service customer service problems. You know, that's what you get paid for is to help solve customer service problems. So much of it can be solved by caring about others, caring about your customers. It is a relationship side of service recovery that's important. Gaining the trust back, making sure that people are actually trust you. I want to end my little presentation on, it's called At the Cash Register. Oh, back several years ago, uh, my uh, uh, son was ready to start up in uh, George Walton Academy and, and uh, we were at the old uh, Kmart looking to get some school stuff. And so all of a sudden we were buying some school stuff and I, I forgot what, but it was about, let's say $11.17. I gave the cash cashier 
$20. And she looked like this because she sucked in. And if you notice, it says zero, zero. So in other words, what happened is she, she you know, normally the cash register should tell you how much cash you will get back. Well, all of a sudden it said zero, zero. She freaked out. And she didn't know what to do. So she got the manager. She got the manager and the manager came by. It looked like a, a graduate of a, a famous college around the area. And she, she freaked out. <laughs> she didn't know what to do. Again, different generation. Okay, so then all of, I said, Ben, Ben, get over here. And, she go, and he goes, oh no, not one of those teachable moments again. <laughs> yes, teachable moment. And so uh, I, he came around and said, look what's that, and I explained to him. And then all of a sudden the manager said, okay, went on a cardboard uh, a carton and a solemn card, $20 minus $11.17, and said, this is how I give the change back. Okay, and so as a parent, what's the first thing I do, of course? Grab my son to make sure they know how to count change back. <laughs> okay, make sure, sure they know how to do that. And then what I thought about, what's the biggest problem? What do you think is the biggest problem? Not the fact that they don't know how to do this. It's the fact that if I went back three weeks later, they still wouldn't know how to do this. See, what we need to do, and this is what I'm going to leave you with this, is that please make sure you develop a customer service culture. A culture that will, if all of a sudden we have got a problem, make sure that I am not afraid to ask. Because I, manager, I feel free that if I've got a problem, I go, can go up to the manager and talk about it. See, if I went back three weeks later, they still wouldn't know how to do that. That's where the problem is. See, it doesn't matter where you've been it matters where you're going. Remember I you saw the slide stuck in the mud? Well, that's what customer service does, is it develops a culture for you to improve, it, uh, develop a culture into improving your relationships with customers so that you will always, the company will always continue to grow and to thrive. Thank you very much, what a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Newton. Um, continue with our program. I'll ask Jenny Givens, our chair elect and uh, chair of the business council, to come up at this time and present our August member of the month and give you our chamber updates. It's all yours, Jenny. Thank you. Isn't it lovely to have Brock here with us today? <laughs> The member, of, the member of the Month Award criteria is as follows. It must, you must be a member of the Walton County Chamber of Commerce. You must have been in existence for at least two years, must project a positive image, and have donated resources to our community. A member of the month can only be awarded the same member once a year, and past member of the year recipients are not eligible to win. A review of this month's member of the month. Community involvement. Let's see. This company started in 2010, but between the managers and owners, they have had over 100 years of experience in the industry they are in. They have seen exponential growth every year in both the residential and commercial side of their business. They state, we believe that the quality of work and outstanding customer service, appropriate for today, sets us apart from our competition. The person making this nomination stated, this company maintains multiple highly visible properties offering um, serve above and beyond expectations. They keep Walton County beautiful by maintaining and improving landscapes countywide. You can see their work at the historic courthouse in downtown Monroe. And this month we are recognizing Southern Traditions Landscaping as our November member. November. It's not November. That's our August member group. Something real quick. Uh, yeah, improv to in front of a hundred people—that's great. Um, <laughs> We're close like that. Uh, one of the 
Oh, you put that one up? Yeah, we got it. Here he is. Well, yes. Uh, no, this is about the, the YPN for Walton County. Uh, it's a new program that we started a few months ago. Uh, we had our first meeting back in March. Something like that. March ish? Yeah. We had about 40 young professionals show up. It was a great, diverse group of people. Um, you know, walks of life from all the county that want to get involved in customer service building their brands uh, and just making Walton County a better place. It's already a great place, but we are the future and uh, we want to keep it that way. Um, and we do have an event coming up next Friday the 18th, uh, a potluck at the Loganville concert uh, on the green and hope to see a bunch of people there, get some good networking in and, uh, and learn more about what we can do as a group to, to help the county. Thanks. and Southern Traditions Landscape and thanks for making that announcement for us. Um, just uh, so we can go over a few things, if you'll look on the back of your program, we've got a few upcoming events. August the 10th, which is tomorrow, um, we have our 10 on the 10th, which is our Buy Local Campaign Initiative, where we spend $10 on the 10th at a, a local business. And we will be meeting at 11.30 a.m. at the former Loganville City Hall. So mark your calendars for that. It's always a fun event. August 24th, we'll have the Strengths-Based Selling Workshop that 34 Strong is doing for us. September the 6th, 8.30 a.m. is our Coffee and Connections. September the 7th, 9 to 12, we have our Career and College Expo. And then, of course, we'll meet back in September the 13th for our membership luncheon. Also on your tables, you have the brochures for the Business Expo. I think Terry said we already have 30 people registered, so you really need to act quickly to make sure you can get your spot. That's always a wonderful event, a great opportunity to network as well as promote your business. So please uh, get that information and make sure to speak with um, Terry or Carrie as a uh, if you have any questions there and then of course we look forward for the young professionals event next week and then let's see carrie do we have new members great if you'll stand up and introduce yourself <laughs> you have the floor <laughs> good afternoon i'm carla Thorner. i'll say my last name because i used to say carla <laughs> <laughs> she listened <Yeah. laughs> Dr. Newton for being our presenter today. It was wonderful and I'm sure we have all gained great knowledge and are making mental notes as we look for our next hires or how to better ourselves with our customer service. Thank you for all of my sponsors who joined in sponsoring today and then I believe it's time for door prizes. So we're going to find the basket so we know who to give them to. Good <laughs> 